BigQuery is Google Cloud's fully managed serverless data warehouse that enables you to ingest, store, analyze, and visualize a bunch of data, and is often used to quickly gain insights from that data. When you're using Firebase, there's a lot of data across a lot of the products, and you can use BigQuery to answer many questions you have about your app or your users' experiences. If you've never heard of BigQuery or want to learn more about its integrations with Firebase, check out the video linked in the description. In this video, we're going to dive deeper into what we can do with the data exported to BigQuery from Firebase. Currently, five Firebase products integrate with BigQuery. Analytics, cloud messaging, Crashlytics, performance monitoring, and A-B testing. Each of these products have its own schema model, and the documentation for each one is in the description. I'll be using public demo data in BigQuery, and the data comes from an actual game called Bingo Blast and contains anonymized data from a few years ago. So you can follow along if you'd like to. The link to this public data set is also in the description. So say you've built this amazing game and you have users happily playing it. You might wonder about how user retention is because you've probably spent a lot of time acquiring new users. There is a retention report that you get out of the box when you add Google Analytics for Firebase to your project. But you can get more details and do some custom analysis with BigQuery's integration with Google Analytics. Let's see some queries we can write with the public demo data. To do that, we'll use the link in the description that will take us straight to the BigQuery data set in Google Cloud Console. Let's hit the Query button and write a query to analyze weekly retention and compare retention groups. And we'll do this over a series of queries. Our first goal will be to gather a list of players who first started playing your game during the week of, say, August 1st, 2018. To do this, we'll use user pseudo ID, which is a string that is randomly generated per app instance to represent a unique player. We'll select from this table, and we'll want the users who executed a first open event, which is an event that gets triggered when a player first opens the app. We'll also want to get the users between August 1st, 2018 and August 8th, 2018. If we hit Run, we'll see a list of all users who first used the app during that week. If we select the count from this query, it looks like that's 408 users. So with that, let's calculate our week one retention. We want to find out how many users who used the app between August 8th and August 14th were among the group of players who started using the app the week before. Luckily, this is easy to do with the in clause. In is a function that will return true if a value exists in a list of values. So for example, select one in one, three, five evaluates to true since one is in that list. In our case, we're not going to use a hard-coded list like this. We're going to look for users in the results from that week zero query as our list. We'll then query the data for users for week one and have the query return which of those users are in our week zero query. When we run that, we'll see this. And if we run the query again using count, we'll get 93. So if we do 93 divided by 408, we get a week one retention rate of 22.8%. Now we can go ahead and repeat this query by going back a week at a time and dividing those results by the original number of 408 to get results for week two and week three and so on. But as programmers, that sounds a little too manual. Let's see how we can do that automatically. We're going to use another bit of SQL to help us out here the with as statement. Essentially, this lets us refer to some results from a query by creating a label that I can use later. For example, we could say with executives as select all from employees where level is greater than nine, select all from executives where first name equals Sundar. Essentially, we're saving the results of the first line select statement into the variable executives and we're selecting in the second query from executives. So let's look at how we can convert our previous statement into something using a with clause. We'll save week one users into week one users, and we'll save week zero users into week zero users. 
will then select from week one users and join the results with week zero users by their user pseudo ID. The join statement is an inner join by default, which basically says, select the user IDs that appear in both of these tables. When we run this, we can see the results have 93 users, same as above. At this point, we can copy and paste the modifier way to several weeks worth of data. We can just copy and paste week one users, change week two to week one, and update the dates. Same with week three. We can then write our select statements to get the counts for each week. If we run that, this is what we see. We can then make this whole thing a little subquery to calculate percentages. So if we run that, we'll see the retention rate for each week. This works perfectly fine, but it seems to be a bit of a mess, doesn't it? What would happen if we suddenly wanted to report the change date of our report? We would need to change 16 different dates in that query, and I'd probably get at least one of them wrong. Let's see how we can clean this up a bit. The trick is to once again use our friend with as to define our data set as well as a few values that basically act like variables. For instance, we can go back and revise our get all users in week zero query to look a little something like this. When we run it, we got the same results as above, but it's much easier to change. If a teammate decides she suddenly wants a report starting on October 31st instead, we just need to adjust the three values at the beginning. Yay. Now, what if we're interested in seeing what retention looks like for one specific version of the app? We can add the app version data into the analytics data set, which will then select week zero users who are using that specific version. When we run that, we'll get these results. We could similarly break out retention by device type or family. Let's go over one more query, breaking out retention by events. For instance, what if we wanted to see what our retention will look like among users who ever retried a level? We could do that by changing our query to grab a list of users who ever encountered a level retry quick play event. When we run that, this is what we get. So that was a lot of query examples, and this was only for retention for Google Analytics. Imagine what you can do with querying your data with A-B testing, cloud messaging, crashlytics, and performance monitoring as well. If you need some help getting those juices flowing, the description has links to query examples for each of these products. With Firebase's integration with BigQuery, you'll be able to gain insights from the data from each of these products, hopefully giving you a better understanding of your users. Thanks for watching, and happy querying.